Well, we talked about it yesterday, and it looked like all the cards pointed to King Henry going to Baltimore. But I told scale, you that. Yeah, well, I told you that. <laughs> but scale of one to ten, how good was this signing for the Ravens? I think it's a good signing. It's a ten. It's a ten. I mean, it, this is what they needed. This is what they tried to get doing before the trade deadline. Tennessee, yeah. for whatever weird reason, didn't want to surrender Derrick Henry to them last football season. Yep. But they needed a running back, and when you pair him with Keaton Mitchell coming off an ACL and Lamar Jackson, they'll have the best backfield in the National Football League. They will. And they'll continue to do those things. Yep. They're getting a guy who has led the league over the last five years twice in rushing. In 2019, he went for 1,500, 2,000 in 2020. He only played eight games, basically had 1,000 all rounded up. It was 937. And then in 22, 1,500. And then last year, 23. Both of those in 23 had 1,700. I mean, 1,100. Mm -hmm. Both of those years, he finished second in the National Football League. So he could have very easily been number one over the last five years in leading the National Football League in yeah. rushing yards. They get a guy who is a bruiser, who's going to get the football into the end zone in tight situations, something that the Dallas Cowboys desperately needed. Think about it on third down. They don't have to rely on Lamar Jackson to figure out how to get the first down. All you got to do is turn around and hand the football to that big old uh, diesel and let him just plow his way forward. Yeah. I mean, this is, a, this is an excellent signing for them. Now, only thing they got to do now is find another playmaking wide receiver via the draft or free agency, because there's some that's still out there. Uh, I, I'm assuming they won't sign OBJ back, you know, and, and they signed Nelson Aguilar, but they need to get another big-time type receiver to go along with Zay Flowers, who had a little breakout year in his first he real did. year in the National Football League. So I, I'm excited for him. Now, here's, the, here's what everybody wants to know about Baltimore. Does it kick them over the top? Does it get them over that number 15 in Kansas City? I probably would say no, but it, it certainly will get them closer to Kansas City. It certainly will do that. Okay. I'm going to do what you do to our scale of 1 to 10. I'm going to destroy it, and I'm going to go to a 20, because this just hit me right between the eyes. This was a win the Super Bowl move for the Baltimore Ravens. I'm going to go right out on the end of the limb and pick them to win next year's Super Bowl because this still young man, I know he's 30, but but he's young bodied to me. Yeah. Because he's freakish. I, I don't know that I've ever seen anything quite like Derrick Henry. He is shattering the running back mold because you shouldn't be able to do it into your throat. I know Emmett did it, but he was like 5'9, you know, 200 and ducked and darted and sort of ran from contact, avoided contact. This man is running through contact because he is a huge human being. And I know, as you point out there, there's a little decline because he is still human. But even at 30, he's a difference maker. And he is in now the perfect spot with a quarterback who can run the read option like no other. And you brought up Keaton Mitchell. You, you want to talk about thunder and lightning. I mean, Keaton Mitchell did run 4-3-7, and I'm going to assume he can come off 100% off his ACL. But when Instead I saw four three seven, he'll run okay four four, four two. two okay gotcha. When I saw him flash and dash last year, it it gave lightning to that rushing attack, and yet they didn't have the biggest banger that they now have. So they have it all now in the backfield, and I'm a Lamar fan, so maybe I'm rooting for him, and maybe I still haven't recovered from what happened to him against Kansas City in the AFC Championship game in Baltimore. But I'm going to pick them because this is the kind of move that you make during a free agent period where you strike while the iron is glowing hot right in front of you, and you do it on a deal again. He gets $9 million guaranteed only this year. Keyshawn, it's just not a lot of money by today's standards. With that cap going up and up and up, to me, this is a steal of a deal. For, for a man who has proven at the highest level against the Kansas City Chiefs in a playoff game that he can be virtually unstoppable. Now, if you get behind, you got to, you know, he, he's not a catch up artist. You know, you, you're going to have to lean on Lamar to do that, but you don't want to get behind Kansas City. You don't want to get 
let Mahomes start just playing catch with Travis Kelsey the way they did in the first half at Baltimore and get behind, I think it was 19-9 to 9 at halftime. You, you don't want to do that. But the point is, look, I tried to dance around this yesterday. I've tried to dance all week. I'm, I'm going to speak from my heart once again as a lifelong diehard Dallas Cowboy fan, delusional as I might be. When Jerry Jones said he was all in, I, I took it to my mental bank because I, I thought maybe this time in free agency, even though year after year I sit right here and I say, Jerry just doesn't do free agency. I thought maybe once he'll say, no, this time I need to do free agency. This time I need to pick my spot. And that obviously is a glaring need for us because not only did we not have Zeke in his prime last year, so to your point, we, we didn't have short yardage. We didn't have goal line. We had Tony Pollard coming off a career-threatening injury, and, and he was sensational two years ago. He was not sensational for us last year, so we missed that. We didn't have that piece to the puzzle to take a little pressure off Dak, as hard as I am on Dak. We did not have that. And I thought, Jerry, will go get this, because... <sighs> I just thought Derrick Henry belonged in Dallas, and I know a lot of Cowboy fans did, so I didn't want to jinx it yesterday, and I said, well, he'll probably go to Baltimore, and you were saying, well, he'll definitely go to Baltimore. Well, I'm and laughing. He, and he definitely I, I, went I'm to Baltimore. I'm laughing because the guy that typically sits next to me, Michael Irvin, yeah. was trying to sell oh, Derrick was Henry he? on the cheap. He was. Okay? Take and, that and, and as I kept saying, yeah. no one cares that it's a star on the okay. side of the damn helmet, except y'all. Okay, we He's trying do. to win a championship, yeah. I, and his championship I, aspirations I, I go through Baltimore okay. and not Dallas. Okay, and but, I don't know if Jerry and them talked to the agent or whatever, and, and, and we just don't know that There was yet. no reporting of that whatsoever, but so I, to, I'm, gonna it. It. I'm gonna doubt it. I'm gonna doubt it. I would think that they, okay, let's say that they had a hallway pass by on their way to the restroom conversation, which, maybe what, what's an, he looking for? Maybe what's an indie. Yeah, yeah, what, yeah, what's yeah. he thinking? What's he looking for? Yeah. I'm sure that conversation came up somewhere along the lines. Okay. And in the end, he picked the team that fit best for his skill set and where they're trying to go. Even though you like Dak Prescott more than you like Lamar Jackson. No, I didn't yeah, say you that. do. Why would yeah, I? Why would I do? You love that? Dak Prescott. <laughs> you love Dak Prescott. Why would I? Why would I like because Dak Prescott more than I like Lamar? I, I think you would make a case you'd have a better chance of winning a Super Bowl in Dallas than in Baltimore. For who? For the Cowboys? Yeah. No. I think not they at play all. in Dallas. Not yeah. at all. They're not yeah. gonna stop, Skip. You just you now now you're going off the rails. No. Here's what I would say in 2023. Derrick Henry, in terms of his numbers, rush yard is dipped. But that doesn't mean he's lost a step. That just means that that offense wasn't worth anything. It they wasn't. played three different quarterbacks last year. I, I agree. mean, it's a different I situation. Totally just agree. in 2022, he rushed for 1,500 yards. He'll be fine. He'll be it, fine. It, 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 and, and this is a sweet spot for him because they do it more by committee than most teams do. Yes. And they will mix and match. And, and Lamar does carry the football his share yeah. of the time. Okay, so it's taking some heat off. You're not asking him to carry it 35 times a game. But the, the, the sure threat of a Lamar carrying a football. One of the things that I said to you, I don't know if it was yesterday, the day before, whenever it was, about Chris Johnson, the former Tennessee Titan running back. He said to me that out of all the quarterbacks in the National Football League, including Patrick Mahomes, yeah. no, it's a good he point. would rather be with I Lamar understand. Jackson I got it. because of yes, everything it, it presents. It does. You know, and here's a guy who rushed for 2,000 yards. He so did. imagine his mindset and his thought process when you got a quarterback carrying a football just like that. That's huge. This is the same thing I tried to tell you about the Philadelphia Eagles and Jalen Hurts and Saquon Barkley. This is huge for these type of quarterbacks with these type of backs. Now, you guys, the Dallas Cowboys, I mean, Joe Mixon's gone. I mean, I could just... Oh, everybody's gone. I don't even know who's left at the running back position in free agency that would even make any sense. You might as well start to look to the draft. Maybe the kid from, from Florida State will be there who's a, who's a big you know, 225-pound back that can pick him up and put him down, catch the ball on the backfield. Maybe you guys can get him. You have taken running backs in the first round before. Most recently, Zeke Elliott. You got a lot of uh, uh, wear and tear mm -hmm. out of Zeke. So mm -hmm. maybe there's somebody along those lines that you guys see that you say, okay, yeah. 
This worked for us. Okay. So I have sat here and not defended Jerry year after year, but accepted, just given in to Jerry's mindset, which is don't plunge, draft. Don't plunge, draft. So I sit here year after year and I say to Cowboy Nation, just give it up. Just close your eyes and take a nap until the draft because he doesn't play this free agent game. Not since Deion Sanders, 1994, has he plunged in free agency. And yet, if you tell me you're all in, then <laughs> just once when it's on a silver, as in metallic silver platter for you, you need to do one thing, and you you owed Cowboy Nation off that disaster of a debacle of a nightmare that you gave us in a home playoff game, the likes of which I have never seen in my Cowboy watching life, that you could come out and put that on display, that you fall behind 27 to nothing to the youngest team in the NFL in a home playoff game before halftime? Are you kidding me? You owe. If you say, I'm now all in, you owe us something, a piece, because Keyshawn, you know and I know, somebody in this free agent period, th there'll be a whole lot of overspending, and we've talked about yeah. overspending for Kirk Cousins, we can go, heck, I don't know, but what the Raiders overspent for Christian Wilkins, because it's a, it's 84 million guaranteed. I like him, but, but do I a, love? Him? But it's not an overspend. Well, it can be if he it, doesn't he give well, you that kind of bang it, for the buck. Everybody can be an overspend if they don't give you the bang for the buck or, okay. or live up to the production or whatever it is that you're looking for. Here's what I would say, man. I'm trying to calm you down because I, I don't I want to calm you down. The Dallas Cowboys got good pieces already in yeah. play. Yeah, let's not, we're, let's not okay, act where, like Where did don't. those good pieces get you in that I, playoff I, game? What I did you see? But there's not anybody in this free agency period. That big that joker who just you, went to Baltimore? That get you over the top. He, he gets us no, over the top. No, because you have too many holes no. that you have to fill. He changes. Not one guy. You know what? You, you, I said it to you yesterday. You better be trying to address the left tackle position, Okay. That's number one. By the way, he's still the on the market is Tyron Smith. Uh, and that's fine. Yep. He's on the market. You may bring him back for a little bit less. Maybe. Or whatever the case may be. But you got to address that because you're getting ready to pay a quarterback a lot of money. And you got to protect your quarterback. Lord. Number Lord. two, you need somebody in the middle, both at the linebacker position and the defensive tackle spot. That's a run stuffer. Mm. You also need somebody out on the edge at the corner position because Diggs is coming back, and if you want to yeah. take Deron Bland and slide him out there, so be it. Mm. You need another corner. On top of that, you need a running back. You also need another big play wide receiver to go along with a record-breaking big play wide receiver in CeeDee Lamb. There's all these different holes that you got to fill. I, I hear you. You I, have I, to. I, I understand, Keyshawn. There comes a point where the owner and operator of the football team has to send a new message to the locker room. I went out and I got the number one need for us. Those are all well and good that you just detailed. I went and got a, the <laughs> biggest banger on the market. I went and got King Henry, he's coming to Dallas. All of a sudden we would have liftoff. The locker room has liftoff because He's proven. He's a made man. He, he's done this and done it at the highest level. He could have led the league in rushing the last five years. Yes, he could have. And everybody can see with their own two eyes, he ain't washed. He, no. He's not near the no. end of the line. He's not crawling to the finish line. Well, what if he didn't yeah. want Dallas, though, okay. Skip? Okay, I'm just saying, you just do it. The, these are the Dallas Cowboys. Keyshawn, it's still the most valuable team in all of sports. It is. Okay, that's, that's all, all I know. And, dandy. and, and you can sell this. You can field. sell this. The top five games next year on television, the top five rated games, will all feature the Dallas Cowboys. You know it, it's, and it, I know it. It's been that way for how long, no skip? Okay. Would you rather win a Super Bowl in Baltimore or in Dallas? You'd rather win one in Dallas because you know you the just magnitude of it. You want to win the damn Super Bowl. Okay, you don't I, care where you win it at. I, I want to get to it. You I can win it in Green Bay and did wonders for Aaron Rodgers. Okay, but seriously, would you rather win one in Dallas or Baltimore? Yeah, where would you? Matter. You know and I know. It it's Dallas. A Super it's Bowl America's is a Super team. Bowl, it's yeah. star on the side of the helmet. This is why. It works. This is why you drive yourself crazy. Yeah. At night in and night out, you don't get sleep because I don't. you're sitting around I didn't last worrying night. about what the Dallas Cowboys logo look like. Yeah. And it's America's team opposed to looking at it and saying, this makes the most sense. If I give 
Derrick Henry, $9 million, $10 million. And I don't know all the, the cap stuff that they're looking at doing in Dallas. But if I, give, if I commit that type of money to him, what does that do for me to be able to sign everybody else when hey, I only I'm, have I'm gonna remind so you, much? Kirk Cousins gets $50 million a year guaranteed, okay? I'm just saying. It, it 50 seems million, like... $50 million guaranteed. You got three other... You got... Four other players on the offensive side of the ball that are still on their rookie contracts. That's not right. the case in Dallas. You've got to address yeah. three big, big dudes. Okay, we keep saying that. Yeah, okay, I, I got it. But you can certainly, these are the number one cap wizards in all of pro football. I would say they, they, they have done a pretty yeah. good job of managing the cap. They can surely maneuver a nine million guarantee for it's it, it, in truth you can argue this is a one-year deal for nine million dollars i know there are incentives yeah. on top yeah. of it but if they don't like what they see he is so cuttable yeah right uh -huh. so if you say he did hit the wall and and he is done well you just say okay next and you you go to the assembly line well, what, right what if he wanted 15 from dallas you give him that Man, well, again, if you negotiate it right, if you give him 10 or 11, it sounds like he would have done Dallas, right? Well, I don't know that he would have done yeah. Dallas. Well, I just don't know. So to your point, now I know what's going to happen because I already predicted to you this would happen. With their second round pick, the Dallas Cowboys will select some of these, one of these running backs. And again, the ESPN mock draft that's up there right now has Trey Benson of Florida State that you pointed out. Going and and he ran fast at the he ran four three yeah. nine at the combine, and he's and a thick body. He's six one two twenty three, yeah. so he's Zeke size. Yeah. He's a little a thick, taller than thick, Zeke, thick maybe. Body. Yeah, and if you can go four three nine, you, that's that's quite a package, right? And yet he's ranked by Mel Kiper on his top ten running backs. He's ranked third on the list. I like Blake Corum. I just like what he does. I like his intangibles and tangibles because I see a little Emmett going on there. And what's he listed at? He's 5'8", 205. So he's built like him it was. Yeah. He ran 4'5". He's not a blazer. He's just this. Okay. He, he's, he's hard to, to get hands on. He, he's slippery in the hole. And that, may, a, and that may work for you guys. And it may, it just may work. He's ranked fourth on Mel's list. He's got Jonathan Brooks out of Texas, and Jalen Wright, who ran really fast at the Combine out of Tennessee, ran 4.38. Then Trey Benson, then Blake Corm. And then number five, I wouldn't hate this. Marshawn Lloyd, every time I turned your games on, he caught my eye. I don't know if he caught your eye, but he caught my he eye because he, he was kind of hard to catch. He did. And, and he's a bigger kid. At, well, he, oh, he's, he's short. He's 5'9", but he's 217. Yeah, he's so, so, okay, he is thick. And and he ran 4'4'6". Four, four, okay, so you, you've got, you got options here. It goes deep. And there's some off-radar picks here. That, that they could probably get that you could probably get Blake Corm in the third round, and then you can just go down the list. And and that Bucky Irving from Oregon's ninth on Mel's list. And every time I turn them on, I said that kid can play. Okay, okay. so why All are right. you acting out? Because it's Derek freaking Henry. Because I've seen it at but, the highest level. So have you, and you know. And I, I love know. Derek Henry, yeah. but I also am smart enough to know that maybe he just didn't want to be in Dallas. Okay. Maybe it doesn't you, fit. Okay, you could be right. I don't know that. If you're right about that, you got Because me. if he wanted to be in Dallas, he'd pick up the phone as a free agent and tell his agent to reach out to a team that desperately needs a running back. Yeah, but... Or maybe, or maybe yet, the Dallas Cowboys are not that interested in veteran running backs because, again, you could have got Aaron Jones. He was free for like a, that. For a second. You could have... You, and he, as you say, yeah. is one of the best backs going, especially gashing the Cowboys year in and year out. Yeah. You also could have picked up Joe Mixon in the trade, but he goes to the Texas. I like Joe Mixon. So do I. Okay? I then like him the, 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 the prize lot. of all prizes goes to your arch rival. Prize of all prizes, as you just said. Yeah. yeah. Prize of all prizes mm. goes to your arch rival mm. in the Philadelphia Eagles. Mm. You could have did that if you wanted that. Yeah. You could have approached it, but okay. you didn't. I still say Saquon is I, overrated. What, but whatever Derek, you want to say about Derek Saquon. Henry is not overrated. Whatever you want to say about Saquon Barkley being overrated. Okay. He was but, available. Right, to the your Philadelphia point. Eagles took him. Every team within your division yeah. got better okay. this time around, except your Dallas Cowboys. Okay, but this is traditional, historical Jerry Jones. He doesn't do this. Okay. And and to your point, let's let's say Saquon is 
rated instead of overrated. Let's say he is that that I guy. Think the he's prize, the prize. I know. That's what I'm saying. Let's say you're right about this, which you won't be. But it, let's say that you are. Okay. And that's another reason you need to send a new message to your locker room of, guess what? Because we're going to talk about this in a few minutes, but. Dak's brother tweeted that the Philadelphia Eagles prove once again they have the best front office in football. Well, that's a shot at Jerry Jones. It, and, it is breath, never mind. Yeah, okay. Never mind, we'll hold, I'll hold that Okay, thought. we'll hold that thought. But my point is, that's kind of what the locker room is, the, the, the locker room is sitting back saying, Jerry, the Saquon went to the Eagles. And, and this isn't exactly DeAndre Swift going to the Eagles, it's Saquon. And he's got the big rep, and he has some big yards on his resume, even though he's 0-10 against Dallas. The Cowboys aren't thinking about Saquon as 0-10. They're thinking about him as Saquon. They look at him the way you look at him. As they, they should. They look at the highlights. He's with a much better highlights. team okay. in players okay. around him it, than he's ever been in his entire six-year career. It's why you have to revitalize a team that got blown off its own field by the Green Bay Packers in a home playoff game as the two-seed. You need to send a new message. Wait, we got King Henry? Oh, great. Let's let's go. We're ready now. We're back. And then Dak tweeted the I'm sorry, uh, Micah tweeted the other day. I promise we'll be even better than ever. And I'm like, even better than what? You know, what what do you have to show? No, well, seriously, what do you have to show? You you need to splash. You need to make a move, and you can't. Wait why, until the. But why you got a splash, okay. though, Skip? You, you just do, because why? that's how teams go win Super Bowls. No, they, so they get go good get somebody. Players, that's okay. how they win Super yeah. Bowls. But when, when they announce that Trey Benson goes to the Dallas Cowboys with the 56th overall pick, nobody's going to stand up in Cowboy Nation and say, We won. We got them. That's our final piece to the puzzle. But just because you go and sign somebody doesn't mean that that's a final piece of the puzzle. I okay. told you the other day. Quarterbacks that leave their teams to go to other teams doesn't all of a Different. sudden become Super Bowl contenders and winners, and they, it just doesn't happen you're, like you're that. You're right about that, but it, it, you're wrong about running backs. They can be on, they can hit the market and change it because running backs are more of a one-year wonder where you can just plug them to, for to a year. Tell me a running back that has left and gone to a team and they instantly have gone to the Super Bowl and won. Well, you're about to see one. You're about to see it. But they already got a bunch of stuff in play. Yep, okay. They already got a bunch of stuff in play. Yep. The Cowboys got other issues they need to address. Okay, I'm on record. The Baltimore Ravens just won the Super Bowl. They just won it. Yeah, I'm not going to say that. Okay, I'm not going to say that based on the signing. Okay. Can't That's go that far. Well, I'm going that far. And I think I'm going to be right about this because that... Even if you was wrong, you would okay. tell yourself you're right. That, that was the move of the free agent signing period that was the move i would say based on their need yeah that probably is the right move based on their need yes scale of one to ten i'm at a 20. way to go jerry wait jerry you out there wake up jerry thanks for watching undisputed fans do you want more highlights from the show Make sure to click that subscribe button for all the exclusive content from Undisputed.